on the very self same day that the South African Classic worth 2 million Rand run over 1800 meters at grade one level is run as the second leg of the Triple Crown alongside the second leg of the Triple Tiara and the Horse Chestnut and a whole host of other exciting contests the richest race on the planet is run. It is the Dubai World Cup worth 10 million United States dollars. Gates fly, they're racing in the Dubai World Cup. Prince Bishop from the inside began awkwardly. It's 125 million Rand. And over 360 million Rand will be paid out on that particular day. Mike de Kock, unfortunately, will not have a runner in the Dubai World Cup, and he won't have a runner in the Kayala Classic which is a race run for purebred Arabians that starts off the program. But he will have a horse participating in the Godolphin Mile in which he's been victorious in the past two years with both Variety Club and Soft Falling Rain having scooped victory laurels last year and the year before. He'll have a horse called Pylon, formerly trained by Michael Azzi, and he probably won't be 100% ready and he definitely won't have the class of either Variety Club or Soft Falling Rain just yet but he will have come on in leaps and bounds from his debut in Dubai on Super Saturday. Mike de Kock is also represented in the Al Quaz Sprint with Via Africa, who will also improve immeasurably from her debut on Super Saturday. And then he'll have a horse called Umgia, who won't be running in the Shima Classic over a mile and a half, but will take his place in the lineup in the Dubai Duty Free over 1,800 metres. Michael feels that he'll probably be more effective over that kind of trip. But his two strongest runners on the day will be in the United Arab Emirates Derby, a race which he has dominated along with Saeed bin Sarur. And there's only one other trainer that's ever won that race, and that's, of course, Aidan O'Brien. And then there's a horse called Al Moonquith, who runs alongside Star Empire in the Gold Cup, run over two miles. 3,200 meters, of course, was marred by the death of a couple of horses in their very first start at Maidan. But that all seems to have been ironed out, and he believes that he might be one of his best runners on the day. I refer to Al Moonquith. Now, Mike de Kock was back for a few days in South Africa immediately after Super Saturday, and we managed to catch up with him at Reinke's Fontaine to find out exactly how he thinks his horses will perform on the richest day in world horse racing, Dubai World Cup night. You have issued a word of warning that it's not all over by the shouting, even though your horse, Mubtahij, is heading in the right direction. You have mentioned the fact that there could be improvement from the Uruguayan horse. Andrew, there will definitely be improvement. Uh, I think one's got to have healthy respect for him. They'd also come out of Uruguay and coming out of South America uh, to the UAE is a long, hard trip. It takes it out of them. Uh, his first run on dirt over that trip. Uh, he's a big runner for the, for the, for the UAE derby, there's no doubt in my mind. I always still favour the Southern Hemisphere horses. I know that the Northern Hemisphere horses get an allowance, but that's for a reason, because they, they're still skeletally immature. And um, they get nine pounds, if I, if I remember correctly, the Southern Hemisphere horses, which I think is significant. But when you've got a, a really mature horse and an, an immature northern horse, it does favour the Southern Hemisphere horses at that time of the year. So he's a horse that um, I would have healthy respect for. I remember in your first UAE derby victory, that was the case with Victory Moon. He got the allowance. And it looked very, very hard to beat the Godolphin horse. I mean, he was absolutely slaughtering everything going into it. But it was fitness and mental toughness that, uh, that won the day for Victory Moon. It's the mental toughness. I think it's the experience. Oh, dirt, dirt is, uh, you know, it's a different beast. Um, it's really a water of attrition out there. And it's the, the horse that's mentally tough, got the gait speed, that can go at a good clip uh, and keep it going when, it, when everything starts to hurt. Um, that wins the day. I mean, Asiatic Boy was another one. He was a monster on dirt. And it is definitely a specialised horse uh, that, that, that can deal with it. And it's, you know, it's a horse that, that um, can travel, take things that are not going your way as well. You don't get a good break, you get all that kickback you've got to deal with. It's a different monster. There's just no getting away from the fact that there's no possibility of sneaking a dirt race. Uh, it was evident with Pylon. He never spat the dummy out, he never threw the towel in. Uh, but clearly, as you described in your pre-race view on your site, that he was going to need the run. But he put the hammer down and, and he went with him for quite some time. You find as well, Andrew, with the dirt races, when a horse needs a run, they, they probably run, you know, five, ten, ten lengths worse in their form, whereas where they were on turf. Turf racing is slowy, slow and gets faster. Dirt racing is fast and gets slower. So when they get tired on dirt, you know, we've seen it at the Vol, Sandrak. I've often run horses there needing runs. 
they just finish bush and next time out they can come out come out and win because they actually come on quite a bit with those runs. Pylon got tired, but he didn't give up. You know, I mean, it's it, he's had no preparation, quite frankly. You know, he, uh, the, it's been very very difficult. Uh, it's been an absolute nightmare with the horses that travelled. A lot of the older horses haven't dealt with it. The younger horses seem to have come through. Um, you know, with the 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 the, the lack of prep, uh, of exercise in Mauritius came back to bite us. You know, four or five months later. Unfortunately, that's that's uh, one of those things. Uh, if I had to do it that way again, I wouldn't do it. On the subject of sprinters, um, Atug once again showed that he is just a very fine sprinter. He was beaten by a very good horse. Banadier looks like he's on the right track, and so too does Via Africa. I was very happy with Via Africa again, given the preparation. You know, it's been long and hard with her, and she took a long time before she actually started to to show anything. And she just started to show, you know, like two weeks, ten days, two weeks before Super Saturday. Um, as I said before, she wasn't going to have things her own way. It's not South Africa, where she, you're the best horse by a distance, and no one can really go with you. When she left the gates, they're all over you. Uh, there's some very, very fast horses around. If one looked at the average merit rating in that race, it was probably about 110 or 111. The average merit rating in any handicap in this country so battles to get to 100 sometimes, or you know, in, in a lot of the group races anyway. So she didn't have it all her own way, and she got tired and didn't spit the dummy out either. I thought she started to, she battled back at the end, even though she's getting tired to get beaten. I think she got beaten 1.75 lengths or something like that. Um, she will improve at least that. And, um, I, you know, I think on, on, on World Cup night that um, she's going to be a runner. It's going to be a tough field, but I really believe she's going to be a runner. Uh, if one looks at a horse like Shaysha, he finished eight lengths up his first start, eight lengths back, came out to win his next two. Um, if she doesn't get hammered by that second run syndrome, which you can see there, given the, given the travelling that they've done, um, I think she's a huge runner on World Cup night. Um, Gio? Very, very courageous. He battled on gamely to get that third berth. It's probably going to be a stronger race on Dubai World Cup night. It's a very hefty price to pay to get into the race in 60,000 US, but he's a horse that seems to have found his way and he's very honest. He is a very honest horse. Um, he had his issues here as a young horse in South Africa. He's just very immature, skeletally immature. He, the time off, did him the world of good there. Um, so he's come well. He's I think the 2,400, albeit he stayed at last time, I'm not quite sure how genuine he is over it. He's, you know, some, I know he's out of a Sadler's Wells mare. Daniel Dance has done always get a trip. Um, I'm going to come back to the duty free over 1,800 with him. Hunter's Light's going to be the horse to beat again. I'd love us to run in the first four, even five. Um, he's an honest horse and he's actually, he's, he's not a bad horse. He's, uh, he certainly has got a, a good win abroad in him. Um, well, the other runners we've got are Al Moon Keith. Uh, he could possibly be my best runner on the night. Um, he won the Nadal Sheba Trophy over 2850 very, very well the other day. I was impressed. Now, his horse that's won a mile and won a 2850 in the same season. Now, for me, when a stayer does that, I think there's something special there, you know. Um, no, no, he goes for the, uh, the two mile race. Um, I think it's called the, the Gold, the Gold Cup. Cup. Yeah, the yeah. Gold Cup. Um, it's it's uh, it's Star Empire's horse that ran. Yeah. He ran close in, up in it, and he's a far superior stayer. If we can get him into World Cup night with the form he's in, he's got to be very close to my best chance of a winner on the night. Um, I don't know what sort of stayers are coming uh, from around the world, but still, he's a horse with a hell of a lot of speed. You know, as I say, speed enough to win a mile, and yet able to win a two eight fifty. So, um, looking forward to him running as well. A break of four lengths now to Azima. To, oh, Cavalry Man's in trouble. Cavalry Man in trouble is broken down in the back straight. Looks to be in trouble in the offside hind leg. I know he wasn't your horse, but he was one of the most beautiful looking horses I've ever seen. Very sad to see the, uh, the passing of Cavalry Man. Yes, that is, you know, and uh, you know, we saw it with Versa and Uh I know Saeed at the time thought he had never had the horse in better form. And yet he broke down, you know. I mean, it's just, for a stable, one doesn't understand what that does to you. You know, it's, it's gut-wrenching. Um, we, we, we lucky enough to have a happy ending with Versing Gederix and that he pulled a ligament and, quite frankly, he's quite comfortable walking around on it. 
uh, and will be able to serve his duties at uh, stud. But it was a, it was a terrible ending for uh, for the Godolphin team. And I mean, I know you know a lot of the people that ride out there, and, and I know I know what it, that type of thing does to a, to a stable, you know. And horses don't talk, and we do our best to assess them, you know. Uh, it's a very, very tough game, and, and you know, and anyone who thinks it's easy, welcome to come and try it.